the traditional way of fighting was to mass forces and attack the, the, uh, the enemy's weak point. Lincoln and Grant both had come to the conclusion that what had to be done was United States forces had to attack every place at the same time, not allow the Confederates any room to do any maneuvering. So what was the result? The result of this planning was the traditional Virginia campaign and the traditional Atlanta campaign in Georgia. The, the diff, only difference, I would argue, in this campaign, this, these two campaigns all together, is that they are all together. They're not massing troops against a small point. They're attacking all at once, wherever they can. This is not Sherman's new destructive war. But at this time, he's still willing to follow Grant's lead because he completely, completely trusts Grant. He's willing to battle Joe Johnston in the Atlanta campaign and the kill and maim warfare that he despises so much because Grant wanted him to do it, and he trusted Grant this much. Well, throughout the Atlanta campaign then, Sherman used the traditional principles that he had jettisoned in the Meridian campaign. But he emphasized some new ideas too, or at least re-emphasized traditional ideas. He placed tremendous emphasis on maintaining control of the only railroad that supplied his troops, the Western and the Atlantic. And he insisted that he must have absolute complete control over this railroad track and over railroad cars going all the way back to Chattanooga and really beyond that to the north and forward to his army, supplying his army in Georgia. And you know, as you know, during the Atlantic campaign, the further in he went, the longer this supply line became. 